coffee. Oh yeah, I do a little coffee spot. Oh, you're using your podcast voice. I have a podcast voice? Yeah, it's a little bit more proper. <laughs> to the high vibe podcast i have brought on my first guest of the season this new season this new era of this podcast and it is my one and only partner in crime garrett webb he is my boyfriend my manager my video editor my everything he is my whole life and he's usually behind the camera a lot of the times but i wanted to bring him on and do a little couples q a so I asked you guys on Instagram to well, thank you so much ask for us anything. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. introduce like, yourself. Yeah, you know, the steps of the podcast. You guys like you say something, then you let the the person that's the guest. You let them just kind of say a little something about themselves. Okay, you know? tell us something about yourself. Well, first of all, thanks for letting me be in your home here. This is a beautiful place that you've got. So I really appreciate <laughs> that, and I appreciate the time that you're going to spend with me today. Um, you know, I'm just really grateful to be here today and to be experiencing this sort of revelation that we'll be sharing with people about how to be in a hopefully goodest relationship as we have. Goodest. Goodest. Good. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I am uh, 6'2", about 170 pounds. I uh, just recently started streaming and uh, I've had massive ultra success over the first two weeks of streaming. <laughs> and uh, I would say that we have been together for almost eight years now. Yeah. And Jeez, Jeez, if that's there's a long one time. thing that we've done really well at, it's being in a relationship. I think so. So I like I the Q and A so. idea for today. I think this is going to be pretty informative over something that we are, uh, yeah, I'd like to say, pretty close to experts at. I mean, I think we have a really solid relationship for sure. I don't think I would be in anything that mediocre or average in a relationship. I just wouldn't have the patience for it. Yeah. And I just keep on falling in love with you more and more every day. Okay. We are going to get to the Q&A. Lead away. Yeah, drink that coffee. I need to get your energy from here to here, okay? You want me to tune up? Yeah, I need you to tune up. I need you to tune up because you know how they say, like, the video adds 10 pounds? It takes away 10 times your energy. So you just get extra. I don't think people say that at all. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first question we have, when and where did you meet? And what was the spark that started it off for both of you? Do you want to take this one or do you want to? Uh, where did we meet? So I had a volleyball crew on Saturdays that would meet. And one day we were just playing volleyball like any other day. And Tori here walked up with her ex-boyfriend. So we didn't normally let strangers play with us, but we saw them like peppering next to us, which means warming up. And we were like, oh, they look pretty good. So they, we let them play with our friend Alex and another one of our... Uh, good volleyball players and they were good so we're like oh, no. hey we crushed it come we back come undefeated. back next week like we're here every saturday and so guess what next week tori showed back up by herself and <laughs> that is as they say history and we became friends first uh, before we ever were Garrett in a relationship. had a girlfriend when wasn't a, it wasn't a hinge type of situation it was just kind of the old fashioned i met you in the world we became friends with all of our friend group or i became friends in the new she took group. all of my friends yeah i became and friends and adopted them as her own and they're all of my, our closest friends <laughs> and now my closest friends too and he had a girlfriend like i said when we first met so well, that's not what the question was about. no because we're talking about the spark <laughs> we're talking about the spark i did not live in santa monica at the time but i would come out to santa monica every single weekend i'd drive an hour and we just became friends like in a friend group we never even hung out one-on-one -on -one or anything like that he broke up with his girlfriend in december it was like a kind of like a toxic breakup and then I would say, like, she kind of got exonated. This isn't part of the spark. Okay, okay. Get this to is... the spark. People want to <laughs> so know about the spark. the spark. Okay, the spark happened at Coachella, which is like, coming up. Our anniversary is actually like. This was a while ago, so it's not like Coachella now. It was like Coachella less Instagrammy. Coachella 2015. That's what we consider our anniversary is at That's Coachella. True. 420 is the anniversary. So it was on day three. We actually went to the silent disco at Coachella and no one else wanted to come. Everyone was exhausted, but like we still had this energy and we want. And I think throughout the weekend, there was like this pool towards each other. She pole. <laughs> pool is the thing you dive into. Pole. 
Pull? Pull. 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 You're not taking a pole. The pole. The pole. The pole. The pole. <laughs> Towards each other. It was like a magnet, but I mean, I couldn't describe it. Like, I, I still didn't even know what I was feeling, but it, there was just like a magnet between us. I agree. And I was just like, I, I kept enjoying hanging out with you more and more, and then it became more just the two of us, and then just magical things would happen around us. Like, these crazy people would come into, not like necessarily crazy, but like these just beautiful people that would be like giving us things or just being excited and encouraging. It was just like every moment that we had was kind of this just grand experience that we got to be sharing together. And I just felt that way every single time that we can continue like journeying together into things. And it just felt more and more magical. And I just couldn't stop enjoying it and wanting to hang out with her more. So it was really kind of just the a healthy way I would say to grow with someone. Yeah, and it was it was just like so strange because we were friends for like a long time before this and so I was just like what is going on right now and we didn't even kiss that night like no, no we didn't. Tori said I had real bad breath. No, <laughs> we didn't even kiss but like something it was just like everything changed that night. That night, everything changed. And I remember you like kept on texting me after Coachella. No, she kept on texting me. And then I would get like the little like butterflies that you'd get in high school, and you're like, "What? Like, why am I so excited when I see Garrett?" Like, and then you would just like Facetime me, and I was like, "I don't know what is going on." I mean, the rest is history. That's kind of how it happened, and then we've been attached at the hip ever since. Yeah, and it's then, been great. I've been I've enjoyed being on your hip. Yeah. You know? And just yeah. we ne never get tired of each other. We just keep having fun. Yeah. Growing together, that's really important. That is so important. Have a partner that sees where you can be and helps you get there. And then you don't feel like anything's getting stale around you. You're both growing, you're both learning. It kind of takes a certain type of person to want to do that with you. I'm sure some people will be very set in their ways once mm -hmm. they get to a certain point in their life. But Tor and I are constantly trying to learn and grow and figure things out together. I think that's the most important thing, honestly, in a relationship. I was just having this conversation. I feel like I'm a completely different person than what I than I'm, when I met you, mm -hmm. like eight years ago. And I've evolved and I've grown so much. And if you weren't growing with me and we weren't growing together, like this relationship wouldn't work. Yeah, it was, definitely wouldn't yeah, work. I was gonna say that the most important thing is eyebrows. But you shut it! Hey, I just cut my eyebrows down. You don't need to be so rude. Face okay. tattoos. Okay. But this no, I think I want to. I want to build on this okay. topic really quick, quick because I think it's super, super important to a relationship, especially like in my community and the people I'm around. Some of them are just now immersing themselves into like personal development and thinking differently and all of that stuff, and they start, you know, changing their habits. They start changing their ways, changing their mindsets, changing their beliefs. And they feel like they're in a relationship with a partner that's not doing that. You know, that's not growing with them. I mean, I have a couple points for those types of people that are in those relationships, but I'm wondering like what your thoughts are on that. Well, I think there's different categories of the type of person, and obviously, you're you're not you're gonna hope that your person falls into those categories with you. Like, there's gonna be a person that thinks that they hit the mountain peak. I'll, I'll take the example of in the Midwest. It's almost kind of like when you get to 25, your goal is I want to have as many kids as I want and just to have the steady job and then that's it and there's no kind of like continuation or growth or building or doing something that you're involves your dreams and so i always knew that i didn't want to do that so i left that sort of environment to go and pursue just continuation of growth um, but then other times you see partners where the one's growing the other one's not and the one grows distant and then you have the ones that are both set in their ways and they you know are just happy kind of being retired together and mm -hmm. what they're doing so hopefully you find the person that's gonna meld with you well or you know you're able to have that conversation with them and they're saying well no you know I am now stuck at this job but I do see myself doing something different in the future mm -hmm. maybe this type of uh, influence that you're giving me could help me grow and propel to a, a yeah. different area I know that I feel like we take turns doing that yeah I feel like there was part of our relationship early on where I probably influenced you in a way where you thought more things were possible than you had imagined because mm -hmm. of the way that I was living my life. Mm -hmm. And I know that later on, especially even in this recent history, you were the one that encouraged me to pursue streaming, which I was just like, oh yeah, when I'm retired, I'll go do these things. And if it wasn't for you, I never would have had the you know initial success, success that I'm having. So it, it definitely is something that you can take turns 
with your partner yeah. and continuously grow. And you can't force anyone to change. You can't force anyone to grow with you. I think leading by example, like if you want your partner to grow with you, like just them seeing you do those things and change your lifestyle and change your habit, either they're gonna wanna get on board with you or they're not. You might have to initiate a conversation and talk about it, but you can't force anyone to change and grow with you. And sometimes people grow apart. I think that's why there's a lot of relationships that don't stand the test of time. They end up being two completely different people, yeah. you know? So I think if you can find ways where you guys are growing together and growing closer, that yeah. to me, like, I feel like I'm always growing with you and closer to you. Yeah. And also I think like it helps that, I like I know that I feel like I'm your biggest fan and I think that you're my biggest fan, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, except but, for Josh. Except for Josh. Josh, Josh. She's getting out gifted <laughs> in, the, in the streams these days. Uh, but you know, that's part of it where when when people are in relationships where maybe they spend a bunch of time at work and they mm. don't spend that much time together, or someone's on the road a bunch, I think that's much more in danger of you growing apart than if you are like us, where we're basically like, I'm your biggest fan, so how would I not be a huge part of your success? How could I not you know, be here helping you and growing that way? Whereas if we were much distant and separate, then you could have sort of a divide and see the people go differently. But mm -hmm. we're always like very involved in what the other person is doing. Next question is, are kiddos in the picture for you too? Mm. Unless that's a kind of candy, I don't think so. No. Is kiddos like a like a Kit Kat derivative? Bon Bon. We bon got our baby bon right bon here. Bon 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 should we get into it? Should we say some controversy? Yeah, let's get it into all it. Right, I think, number one. Well, no, okay. First of all, I want to set the the preface. Is that that what I'm trying to say? I want to preface this. I want to preface. I want to preface this that if you have a strong desire to have kids and start a family, you probably should have kids and start a family. Or even if you have a weak desire and that and thing, if you, you don't, think that's for you, then go ahead and do it. We're yeah. not saying you should. But do it. if you don't have a desire to have kids and you're doing it just because you feel like that's what you're supposed to do, like that's the next you know, era of your relationship or that's what society or your family or your grandma or your mom tells you that you should be doing like think twice before you bring another soul into this earth because you just feel pressured and you feel like that's what you're supposed to do. And I think for me, I felt pressured as a woman. I felt like that's I'm supposed to have this urge to want to have babies. And I have never had this urge in my entire life. I've never wanted kids. Reason but number I, one. Yeah, I, but is. I always thought that was your, what you're supposed to do, but I've always loved animals. So that was like one of the reasons, and people said, as you get older, you're going to get the baby fever, and as I get older, I feel like my body produces birth control on its own. Like, it's like not happening. Like, you I save definitely, a lot of money that way. I definitely do not want to have kids in general, and I remember having this conversation with Garrett because I kind of didn't know where you stood. Mm -hmm. And you were like indifferent too about it. I think we, we, we were lucky in that. I think, I mean, that could be a real big relationship divide too, as if this question for the person is different. Um, I, I never really, well, we can go through the reasonings. If you want to go through reasonings. Okay, let's go through the sense. reasonings. So the, the first reason, obviously you can talk about the influence of society. And there also is a genetic element where women have specific uh, things that release in their body that makes it appealing for them to have babies. That's just survival of the fittest. Like that's our species trying to reproduce. Mm. But for me, my biggest thing was I didn't see the planet going in an area that I thought was conducive for more kids. And I still believe that, that, that we're not on a great trajectory for the future. And so for that number one reason, even before we discussed things about it, I was just kind of like, I don't need to have kids, you know, like it's, it's not something that I think is going to, you know, fill me with purpose. Mm -hmm. I feel like one of my goals in life was to find purpose outside of being a parent. Don't get me wrong. If that's the thing that you feel like is your biggest in life, I'm not trying to put a slight on you. Mm -hmm. It's either meant for you or it's not. And I think to expand on that, like overpopulation, I think is something that is a big problem. Lack of resources, too many people. And the way that we're treating the earth, it doesn't look 
like it's getting much better and that is part of the reason environmentally why we decided to live a plant-based li lifestyle was because we just wanted to make less of an impact right we're not perfect by any means if we do ever have a desire down the road and we want to have a family we would probably just adopt mm -hmm. we would go the adoption route rather than having like bringing more babies into the world yeah. and just taking care of someone that already needs Right. Family. I think it's just not for everyone, and I think that's totally fine. And you know, what was the last reason? Tori doesn't think kids are cute. That's <laughs> it. You can't say that. What are your love languages? Oh, do you remember mine? I don't. Whoa, are you saying I don't remember yours? Do you feel unloved? Okay. Oh, oh do you want to say mine? And I'll say yours. Oh, okay. So yours are quality time. What's my number one though? Quality time? No, number one. Acts of service. Okay. Quality service. <laughs> <laughs> I do acts of service for Tori every day, and I hope to score points on mm. them every day. Gary's is <laughs> gifts. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut your mouth. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> he loves gifts. I just shower him in all the gifts, and he feels so loved. <laughs> Ridiculous. He loves material things. Don't put me down in that low form of humanity, okay? No offense if your love language is gifts. No, Garrett's is words of affirmation is number one for sure. You got to tell him that you love him and that you're proud of him and that he's doing I'm, I'm easy. every single day. Number one is words of affirmation. And number two physical touch. is physical touch. You just have to tell me I'm doing great and pet me and then that's all you need to do. And I think really understanding each other's love language is so important because the way that we feel loved is so different. I feel loved when Garrett is doing things for me, like when he's, when he's like helping me and he's like, because to me, I think when people go out of their way to help you, I truly feel loved. Like, I feel like, oh my gosh, like this person really cares about me. They really love me because they're, they're sacrificing their own time and doing things that they could be doing for themselves to help me. And it makes me feel really loved. And then to have that one-on-one -on -one quality time is also up there. Like I just love being with you and bonding with you mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And for him, I just gotta say I love you and I'm proud. <laughs> I'm easy. I am so easy for me to think that you love me. That's, that's all you have to do. Just good job. <laughs> good job. Good job. Good job. Gotta shower him. But on a side note, I don't think, you know, and I may be wrong, but I haven't seen any reason why any love languages would be incompatible. You know what I mean? No. So for instance, I think the most important part is understanding and having that conversation with your partner and finding out what is most important with them because there's so many situations in a relationship where things can get off the tracks or heated and if you just go back and revert to understanding how they work and function as how you can show them that you love them and appreciate them mm -hmm. in a moment where it's kind of dicey mm -hmm. then you can get back on track with having a great relationship much much faster because knowing them and knowing how to treat them right in those ways is very very important if you give them the wrong type of love language in a spot where they're feeling like they're unloved then it can almost like double their feeling like oh, i didn't want this gift I was mad about you for not communicating about a thing. I think having that conversation with your partner on what makes you feel loved is so important because we can't read each other's minds. For me, like my love language was acts of service and Garrett didn't know that and he would just tell me he loves me every single day, which he does, you know, he does do that. But like doing that and then not filling up my actual love language tank, which is acts of service, I wouldn't feel loved. You know, and I think you knowing that acts of service and quality time is my love language and me knowing that words of affirmation and physical touch is your love language. Like I know how to love him in the way that makes him feel loved. So I think either taking that personality test, I read the book. and I, I would I, recommend the personality test for everybody. You yeah. should know it about yourself. If you, you don't should. know your own love languages, you need to know them. They will help yeah. you in every relationship and that's not just with a partner. Just yeah. Everyone I don't even think you need the personality test. Just ask yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, the personality test helps you decipher it right but like ask yourself like when do you feel the most loved is it when people actually like write a letter to you or tell you verbally is it when they're cuddling and touching and showing affection is it when they're giving you gifts is it when they're going out of their way and helping you with things or is it when you're just spending quality time with them like when do you feel the most love from people and I mean I feel like that just that having that self-awareness is super important, but making sure your partner knows too is like, super maybe important. Maybe take the test just to be sure. Yeah, the test will help. How do you manage a life on social media in a relationship? You both work together on the social media and it becomes a relationship. This, <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever see it like it's a problem, do you? 
So we are very heavily entwined with producing everything, you know, together, whether it's the use of equipment or even this podcast, helping you set up things and helping you understand how to work different stuff. So I think for me, the most important thing to let it not get in the way is the kind of balanced understanding of like, here, this is what we're responsible for today. Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as like the partnership goes, like we're both fully dived into it. You know, like I know that it's part of my responsibility to help Tori basically with whatever that she needs for whatever we're doing that day. So I wear a lot of different hats. It could be editing, it could be sound design, it could be visual effects, it could be just carrying camera equipment. It could be just holding your water bottle and watching bonbon. So yeah. it just kind of depends. I on guess I'm a that. little confused because I, I never feel like it's been a problem. But I, I also feel like as far as my focus on social media, it's been a long time coming, right? Like we, I've been showing up and being consistent, doing things. And you've been helping me from the beginning with shooting content, taking photos, all that stuff. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't necessarily think I have like a super unhealthy relationship with social media. So I'm not... Like, while I do a lot of stuff from my phone, I'm not, like, constantly just, like, yeah, in it all not, the time. You're not over-engaged in social media no. to the point. I think, even so, there's probably certain areas where you could go into comment sections more I on know, your own things. I like know. YouTube, for instance. But I don't think that either one of us have an unhealthy relationship with social yeah. media. I think and, we have a good balance. With and it. it's not like we're like mega famous or anything where it's like causing any problems. You know, like no. we, we go out. You got recognized one time at a bar and a, a lady was like this and like took a <laughs> selfie with Tori in the background. I was like pointing at her. It's Didn't very, even ask her to take a picture. That no, was kind of fun. It's very rare when I like get <laughs> recognized. And so like it doesn't bother me because it's not, it's not like I can't go out and enjoy my life and not get bothered. Yeah. Like we, it doesn't, it doesn't affect us. For now. How do you balance the dynamic of working together in your relationship? We kind of touched on that earlier, like setting expectations of what's to be done each day or, you know. But we're with each other all the time. We have a very unhealthy amount of time spent (laughs) together in a very healthy way. I think it's very rare. I wouldn't say that this is, everyone's going to be capable of doing this in a relationship because we see people all the time that we go out and one of our friends leaves their significant other and comes, hangs out with us and they're just like, oh, I can't. I'm so glad I'm away from him for a little while. And then we just look at each other like that. We don't relate to that at all. At all. Right. At all. I never am away from Garrett and be like, thank God. Like I needed the break. Like I'm always like, I miss him. Like all the time. Not like in an unhealthy way. Like I'll still go out. Like Tori is great. And I don't expect to find this in a woman either, but she'll allow me to go out by myself for eight hours. And she knows that she needs to go home and recharge her batteries and she knows that I'm kind of a night owl and part of like my experience in life that gives me great joy is going out and experience things at night and she allows me to do that um, and gives me that trust and so that sort of just fills up all of my tanks of like things that I need as far as fun goes and she's very amazing at that. Yeah, we so never I'm go home lucky. at the same time ever. Right, but she's like, we're okay splitting up and then yeah. arriving there later. Yeah. If, like, you know, she goes out and goes dancing. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I miss her, but I'm not like, oh, I need her yeah. right now. I can't handle it without her. So. I think as far as work goes, though, and like working with your significant other in a business, and then also trying to have like the romantic relationship, I think we're doing a great job right now. And I think we're still finding ways of improving it. Like one thing that we're trying to improve on that we haven't like quite successfully done, but we've done a little bit better is having the communication about scheduling, right? Because now that Garrett's doing streaming as well, like he's working on building his own brand and your own social media presence, meaning you you don't spend every devoted hour to helping me build my business. And so... Less acts of service. <laughs> oh, no. And so we are saying, like, Garrett's like, okay, these are the times or the days and times that I want to do streaming. And we'll have this conversation on, like, Sunday or Monday, like, when I want to do shooting. So he knew that I wanted to have him on this podcast. And so having those conversations for the week ahead and saying, okay, this is what my week looks like. This is how... I'm going to help you and support you. This is how you're going to help me and support me. These are the times that we're going to be working. And then I think we have a good shut off period where, you know, like when we're not That's working, important. when yeah. we're not working, we're having fun together yeah. and we're not talking about work. I think that touches on the burnout question too, like where, you know, how do you balance your social media? Like since you're working on it and then you have to do it part of your job and then you have to get on it and get on the comments section. I mean, I, I see the same thing with, with streamers, even yeah. just doing this recently. It's, it's, it seems like it can take a toll on you if you don't have a healthy way to shut it off 
and go to your life and yeah. then that shows up in your work so if you are too burnt out on social media and then you're producing videos and you don't really want to anymore that mm -hmm. shows like the camera picks up everything mm -hmm. then your energy's off people will be like what's wrong with you and yeah. to be honest with you you can have an unhealthy relationship with anything you yeah. can abuse any single thing on this earth if you don't have a good balance with it. Yeah. It's just, that's just the truth. And to add to that too, like I think, yeah, we have a shut off period, but I think we both love what we're doing. That like, even when we're going on walks or we're at brunch, like we like to talk about like social media and our goals and things that we want to do. And it's not necessarily like in a business setting, like we need to get this and this and this. Mm -hmm. It's more just like we're riffing and, and running ideas past each other and just talking about our dreams and our goals and our aspirations. And also, I think one of the biggest problems that we had as far as like navigating this was when I remember like when we would try to shoot videos for both of us in the same day mm -hmm. and I would be like, okay, I want to get these videos done. And Garrett also on that day wanted to get his own videos and his own content done. And he felt like he didn't have the time or the energy after like shooting me to get his own stuff done. And so now I think we've gotten to a better place where we kind of separate that. Where it's like, okay, on these days, it's my day for shooting. Times. It doesn't have to be days. These are time, times, time yeah. segments, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, se like yeah. really separating it. Like, we don't go somewhere and say, oh, we're going to get videos for both right, of us. Right, right. You know, and so we kind of just, like, map it out. And I think if we're learning as we go, it's all communication, I think, at yeah. the end of the day. and. No, I agree. That was one of the bigger problems where it was yeah. just, like, I felt like, we had double scheduled the videos and then one of yours ran late and then I had less time to do it and I felt over pressure mm -hmm. to do it and I'd be like, I don't even feel like doing this anymore, yeah. you know, because I'm not going to produce what I feel I'm capable of doing. Yeah. So yeah, but that yeah falls back into communication. Communication I think is so, so communication. important. Communication. Next question. Heterosexual, heterosexual, heterosexual friendships and navigating them in a relationship. Does that mean same sex, opposite sex friendships? I know what the question means. Uh, basically, <laughs> that's about trust. So I would have no problem if Tori wanted to go out with guys in a group somewhere or a setting with girls and guys. She does that all the time in dance classes, I'm mm -hmm. imagining. Mm -hmm. And if you have a problem with your significant other, I mean, obviously they can cross the line with how much time they spend with somebody of the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. But if you have trust in there, like there should be nothing for you to worry about. And if you are filling each other's tanks with whatever your love language is or whatever the other person needs in a relationship, then there should be no reason to feel like I'm threatened by someone else entering that person's life. If I'm going like six days a week out to dinner with some other girl, obviously that's crossing the line. Yeah. But if I'm going out into a group setting and there's girls there, or she's going to go... You even went on a hike with one of your friends. Yeah, like, I have a female friend, and Tori, you know, I think it just comes down to trust, trust honestly. Yeah. And like frequency, obviously. There's yeah. like a moment, there's a time when it's inappropriate. And then I also think like just don't be dumb. Like you know... If someone likes you or if someone's into you and they're not just your friend, right? Like you can sense that vibe. Yeah. At least I hope you can. Some people, Ooh, but then I don't the know, paradox. You, huh? you know the paradox? Oh, Garrett talks about I have a theory about the okay. paradox. I don't think it's possible for a girl that's in a relationship with a guy to have a single guy friend that wants to hang out with them one-on-one -on -one and the guy friend does not want to have a physical relationship with that girl. Single guy friend. I do not Single think. If, guy if that guy's in a relationship with another girl, yeah, sure, that's possible. Yeah. But for that guy, and I'm just speaking from the male mind, if that girl asked him to have a physical side to their relationship, almost 99.999999% of guys would say yes to that. That's just because guys are easy. If you flip it, if they are, when we're more <laughs> easy sexual creatures, yeah. right? That's why the women do the choosing out there. They're like, nope, not you, next. Nope, not you, next. And the guy's like, swipe them all. Maybe somebody, maybe somebody's going to be good. Anybody's going to say, I got a match. So it just depends. If you put the girl in that situation, right? I, like I have a, a friend that's single. Like, like she said, we've gone hikes together. And it's not like... I know that there is a different dynamic where if they can have a sort of healthy relationship with a guy without thinking that physical would be a guaranteed yes for them, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously it can be. I don't mean to be hypocritical in saying that that's not possible, but the likelihood of it is much, 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 much smaller. And then I think it just comes down to communication, you know, like having that conversation and trust, communication, trust. Because I remember there was one time where one of my friends made you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. 
you know? And that was, and Garrett didn't want to tell me, obviously, because it was one of my friends. So we've had to navigate stuff like that, you know? And I think, I think it's never, there's not like a one size fits all no. answer for this. I think it's really a case by case basis. It's dependent on how your guys' relationship is and your relationship to that person of the opposite sex as well. We're going to end on this question. All right. What is the key to success in your relationship? Ooh, we already touched on it a little bit. I have a few answers. I want to say it's probably the earlobe. There's a few keys that. to the kingdom. First one, I think that's super, super important for every single relationship is communication. Me realizing that Garrett cannot read my mind and being able to verbalize and communicate how I'm feeling is super, super important. And sometimes that means letting him know that I don't even know how I feel. Like there's been times like we've gotten in tiffs or arguments or whatever and Garrett wants to talk about it right away because he just wants to like get everything out of there and like sometimes I'm like hurt or I'm angry or I'm frustrated and I don't even know how to verbalize any of these emotions and even just communicating to him that that's how I process. But I think having that communication is so important because your partner cannot read your mind. Yeah. Like, I mean, you've gotten pretty good, well, you, <laughs> but that's I, but from also, I think I think you're skating around a lot of th things. Like, communication is one, but also it's a communication about how you deal with frustration. So, people have different ways of how they want to attack a problem, and it doesn't change from if you're in a relationship or if you're just like doing a math problem. Like, some people have, I need to get this done right away, which is me. And the more I let it sit there, the more it festers, and I'm I'm just gonna it's gonna boil over. I need to I have a problem. I gotta fix it. Let's talk about this right now. Tori needs to have time to assess how she's feeling. She doesn't want to say the wrong thing. She doesn't wants to make sure that what comes out next after the frustration is accurate to her communication and how she feels. And so we almost have a little bit of a clash there. Mm -hmm. But because we know and have experienced this together and communicated about it, we know how the other person has to deal when they are in a frustrated situation. Mm -hmm. And then we know where to come back together and sort of have an adult conversation about what happened. So understanding how you deal with frustration and how you want to fix problems is also a really good part of communication. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, then you're left with your partner just, I'm gonna guess how to meet you in the middle here. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as kind of not knowing your love language. If you don't know how you want to be loved, you can't communicate that to that other person, which is why I think it's super important for people to know their love languages as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it all boils down to communication. I think communication, communication is there's a subset. couple other things I want to add to this too. Yeah, and, yeah, and then you get uh, growth. I think growth, growing I think growing together. together, right? And this is one of those things where it comes with time. We've been together for eight years now and we have both changed and evolved a lot over the eight years, but we've done it together. So I think in a relationship, if you can grow with your partner together, that's a beautiful thing because you're not going to be the same person you are 10, 20, 30 years down the line. And that also comes back to communication and communicating your growth and your vision and where you're going and making sure that your partner is a part of that as well. Yeah, if we weren't so open yeah. about talking about growth, like I never would be where I was today mm -hmm. and probably vice versa, you know, just yeah. going through the things and then you're having your partner gas you up about the stuff that they believe in you, you know, sometimes I sit and I think to myself, I look at my people in my life that like have this really great version of me in their heads, right? And I tell myself, be the person that they see you as bon and bon. you grow. Bonbons bon. Be born, the person that bonbons. But you know, like yeah, close yeah. friends or people yeah. that are like dreamers, you know, mm. that they see you and they see you as this figure that's larger than life and you go, I want to live up to that person's standard for me because mm. then I know that I'm growing and I'm pushing myself in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And the last thing, honestly, and I don't even know if this is applicable to other relationships it should feel easy honestly like at be, least from the start too yeah and like especially in the beginning and when you're in that first two years like that's like honeymoon phase like if you're already bickering and arguing and having all these problems like that to me is like it could be some fundamental clashes. Yeah, I'm like, you guys just might not be good yeah. together. Yeah. Like, we didn't even have a single, like, significant fight in our first two years. And then even the fights that we've had 
after that. Yeah, like, they're yeah. pretty, I mean, you have a little bicker and stuff like that, but we, it's nothing that's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like all laughable. I mean, we joke, you know? I mean, we joke so much too. I mean, laughter is such a big part of a healthy relationship. I yeah. remember you had the friend that said like, I get it why it works with you too. Like, you love to laugh and yeah. he makes you laugh and he's good at it. Yeah. And so, you know, just making fun, it doesn't have to be laughter, it's just... I know that we at heart are best friends still, yeah. which I think is the most healthy way to do a relationship. I think it would be much harder if you're in a relationship with somebody you didn't see them as your best friend. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, those, those friends that we have where they escape their partner almost to go yeah. hang out with their friends. Like anytime I'm outside and Tori wants to join me, no matter what circumstances, I'm overjoyed because my best friend is coming to join me in those situations. I'm not trying to escape from that person. So yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's like, yes. I think there's things that we do to continue to make our relationship great, but it never feels like a chore. Like, it's not something that I feel like we have to, I mean, I don't want to say work because I do think that there are things that we do together to make our relationship better, like being vulnerable and having those conversations and those tough conversations. But I feel like we've done so much of that work mm -hmm. that like, it's just easy now. Like we know each other so well and we have so much fun together, like having fun, having fun, having fun with your partner is yeah. so important. Especially if you decide to get into a, you know, business together with your partner, right? Like oftentimes then you can't switch off that. But, you know, the beauty, I think, of what we have going on, too, is that the business side is very fun as well. Yeah. Like, we're both really enjoy being students of social media and understanding what goes on there, having conversations about those, but then at the same time, like, being done and watching your favorite show or yeah. going to play volleyball or just going out to, like, a happy hour, having fun. What are the keys to a successful relationship to you? The keys, for me, are understanding that what makes me happy can still be inside of what we encompass week by week. And sometimes that means that I just need to go play games. <laughs> and as long as I'm filling my tanks, I'm giving back a better person to her. And so whatever you need, just try to be open and honest and communicate about that. Mm -hmm. And then just to cap everything off, find out your love language, find out how you deal with problems, Find out how your partner deals with problems and find out their love language. And then when you have an argument, just realize it's just the argument that's separate from your relationship and you want to talk about it and communicate it the best way that you can. And then you just move on with this beautiful thing that you had before. You want to know the number one thing that we fight about like almost daily? Do you know what it is? The dishes? No, no. <laughs> we don't fight about the dishes because you just do. Oh, I do that. Do my, I do that in my head. No, we don't do fight dishes. about the dishes. Like, doing we don't dishes fight about the dishes. It's at dishes. night. I'll give you a hint. It's at night. Oh, the remote. <laughs> That's the number one thing. That's right our, no, and it's not who gets No, it. you gotta pick something on this. Neither of no, us you want gotta to. Pick something on the it's TV. like the opposite of like wanting to control the remote. Like neither of us wanna hold the remote. <laughs> like we're like, no, you, you do it. No, you <laughs> <turn>. <laughs> Sometimes she'll throw it on the floor. <laughs> like Tori Tori gets fun, stubborn bowl comes out. And like, I'll go, oh, here, I put it next to you. And then she'll pop the covers up and the remote will fly across the room and go, she'll go, you did that. <laughs> I gave it to you. No, I gave it to you. That's you over there now. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to sleep. Not mine. <laughs> it's real fun. Thank you for coming on as my first video guest I on love the it. podcast. Amazing, again, amazing place. Thanks for inviting me in here. Yeah, I hope you um, love it. We, got, we try to keep the vibes high in this place. Right. And thank you all for listening, for watching on YouTube. If you like this video, please comment, please share. Smash the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Just demolish below, it. Comment below. Do all of the things. Obliterate the like and button. And we will see you guys next time.